Do you want to continue this theological discussion in the car or in the jailhouse with the cops? Today's review, we're going to be having a look at the stories, Pulp Fiction. This is Vincent Vega, the one six scale collectible action figure. Let's grab the tape measure, figure out how tall Vincent Vegas is. We're gonna put that right to the top of his head. There we go. And holding the Ultra Measuretron 5000, we know that the figure stands 12 inches in height. Sorry, what? Centimeters? Yeah, I can do that. Switching this over to centimeters, then the figure stands 30.7 centimeters. Astute viewers of this channel, and thank you for that. Astute viewers who had seen my review of the Jules Wing Winfield will also recognize that this is in fact the same display base that we had also gotten with that figure as well. Right down to the exact same font that is on the top, right down to the same oval shaped black display base, right down to the adjustable, well, the neck here, and the adjustable waist clip that can fit around the figure's waist. And speaking of Jules Winfield, what kind of review would this be without bringing in Jules Winfield that we've already had a look at on this channel? It certainly goes without saying that I would imagine if you had picked up this guy, you would have likely wanted to pick up this guy or vice versa. They are certainly one of those iconic pairs in cinematic history where really I'm so thankful, first of all, that Starries would give us both options. But if you are gonna be picking up the one, you're probably going to want to be picking up this one as well. Further astuting you viewers, you'll probably notice as well that the body types are not the same. These are not the exact same body types. If you put them side by side as they are in the movie, Vincent is shorter. Let's not knock him down in the process, but Vincent is shorter than Jules. And this is also true with these figures as well. I immediately also noticed too that when I got these ones out of packaging, uh, Vincent definitely has a broader torso. He feels a little bit more substantial, if you will, versus the thinner frame of Jules Winfield. Now, again, that's exactly like it was in the movie. Samuel L. Jackson is a much thinner actor than 
John Travolta. But uh, also, I'm glad that they did not use the exact same bodies for both figures. It does seem, however, that they're using similar, of course, costumes as both the characters in Pulp Fiction are sporting the black suits. Just before Jules does bow out, though, as I've already had a full in-depth review of him, I do want to once again show the head sculpts on here. Well done on Starace's part for starters, even just giving us Pulp Fiction figures. That is one thing I have always wanted to see six scale figures from of Vincent and Jules. Now that we physically have them here, I'm really impressed with what Starace has done. The likeness is quite good. I might even say, even though I'm a bigger fan of Jules in the film, I might think that Vincent does have a slightly better head sculpt. It really does look a lot like John Travolta. It's not nothing necessarily knocking Jules. I was very happy with the head sculpt. I feel like that, again, his hair could have been a little bit fuller, uh, whereas I think Vincent's hair sculpt is dead on. But uh, I do really think that the head sculpts on both of the figures are really good. In fact, why don't we spend a little bit more time looking at the head sculpt here on Vincent. Now, if we spin it around, there is a separate piece here, or at least it looks like a separate piece. I am wondering why they chose to make this separate, not in the sense that you can pull it out, but just looking at it, you can see that there's this outline between this top portion of, the, of his hair and this bottom portion right here. It would have made smart sense that if we eventually get ourselves a ponytailed version of Vincent, that maybe this is the reasoning why they kept this as a separate add-on. Again, it's not something that you can remove, but you can look at it and see that there is this very, not quite obvious, because you're really not going to be looking at the figure from the back, but you can see that there's that outline that's running around about midway of his hair here. Certainly, I remain hopeful that we will get ourselves a variation, a going out Vincent, if you will, when he's with Mrs. Wallace, and uh, we can get ourselves the ponytail head sculpt. This could have simply have been something that they could have also added to this figure. It wouldn't really have required any new head sculpt on their part. They could have just had this piece come out, removing the hair piece, <clears throat> like the actor, and uh, you could have just replaced it with the ponytail, which I guess would have gone, gone back here. That probably would have required some magnets, though, and uh, again, the fact that I'm seeing that makes me hopeful that we will eventually see ourselves a ponytail version of Vincent, because it really would make logical sense to have one. I'm very happy, though, with the head sculpt that Starius has given this figure. The likeness, though, of John Travolta is uncanny. I would have to go back and watch the film again. I've noticed, though, that the figure has these almost red imperfections to his skin here. Maybe that's actually how he had it in the film. You can see that he's a little redder around the areas around his cheek and he's got a red area around the top of his forehead. They've put in little wrinkles there on his forehead and even like the side of his face. Now on this side I'm noticing that there's some additional gray that's added above his eyebrow. I'm wondering if that's supposed to be there. The other side doesn't have that but like other Star Ace releases. They're really good at painting these. Uh, these, are, I believe, are all hand-painted pieces. They've even put in the earring there on the side, of course, attached to the lobe of Vincent's ear there. So looking at his outfit, it's pretty much identical to what we saw with Jules, just on a different body. The shirt is a white shirt, and he's got a little pocket on the side. Doesn't look like it's a functioning pocket. It looks like it's been seamed along the top. And the shirt is done up by Velcro. It's also got a black tie, which is attached by a clear elastic. This is all because we're going to be wanting to take this off because he also does come included with a white shirt and a blue pair of shorts. Um, he does also, of course, have his sports coat here, the jacket of his suit, uh, which is really nicely tailored. The interior, though, is finished. Sometimes when you see six scale figures, there goes the hand that pops off frequently. Sometimes when you see six scale figures, uh, the outfit looks good on the outside. And then when you look on the interior, you can see sort of unfinished or really how everything's been seamed together. Um, once again, really nice job on Starius's part to finish off the jacket completely, not only on the outside, but the inside as well. Uh, he's got a couple of bottom, bu uh, buttons here, functional pockets that you could actually put the hands into if you wanted to. He has a faux leather belt, pair of black slacks, and a rather pair, a rather nice shiny pair of dress shoes here. Instead of dressing him over to the alternate outfit yet, I just want to look at his accessories and talk a little bit about that, and then we'll get him all dressed down in his more casuals. 
Uh, why don't we start first with his pistol. He's got a 45 caliber automatic handgun with a removable clip right there. You can even see as, the, as well, they've sculpted the bullet on the very end of the clip and that slides into place. Panel lining a little bit of that silver just to give some added detailing there. And there's a pistol on both sides. He doesn't come theoretically with as many accessories as his partner in crime did have. Um, he had a little bit more if you counted like the hamburger and like the milkshake and stuff like that. One thing though he does come included with is his briefcase. Now the briefcase we never really see, as far as I know, we never really find out what's inside. He opens it up and it just light shines up. Um, here, however, though, the reveal is there's nothing inside the briefcase. However, it does open up, which I like. One thing that was smart that Star Ace did, though, was they gave you the, the hand already attached to the handle. I suppose you could take the hand off. It doesn't look like it's necessarily been glued into place, but they obviously know that it would have been a struggle for you to get that handle around the area of his fingers. So instead, they just simply gave you the hand already attached. That's smart because I really don't want to have to fuss and uh, stress out trying to get that hand around the handle. Um, the briefcase does look quite good as it does in the movie. Some gold snaps there with the little buttons there on the sides. Finished all the way around. Um, again, just nothing really inside. It would have been neat if they had put a, like, a little light source in there that could have shone up. But uh, he does come with his briefcase. And then in the category of, I certainly will lose this if I'm not careful with it, he comes with uh, a cigarette. A very, very small cigarette, but he does come with the hands to hold it, which is something I want to talk about now for a second. Now, if you look at it, Vincent has, he has three extra hands. I know what you're thinking. You're saying he's got five hands. Okay, he's got two hands when you immediately get him out of packaging. He then comes with three extra hands, which we'll talk about in a second, and he comes with one hand for the briefcase. So that gives us a total of six hands. Now, if we look at those hands, the problem with these is that this hand, as you can see, fits this side of the figure. I mean, you, you obviously couldn't have it on this side because the hand would be facing the wrong way. Okay. Then he has this hand here. Now, this hand is good for holding the pistol, which we'll go ahead and put into his hand. But you'll probably see one thing, a, a regular happening occurrence here. It's on the same side. Now, looking online, when I think they were doing initial uh, photos for what this figure was going to look like, I, lo I saw a lot of images with him holding the briefcase on this side, and then he freed up this hand to use for other stuff. Well, the hand is unfortunately on this side, which is, happens to also be the same hand that is for the pistol, which don't, just so happens to also be the other hands that come included with the figure that does stuff. The only thing that that hand has is a relaxed hand. There's not really much you can do with it. Here he has, let me just get that in there without dropping it. He has a hand for holding the cigarette. If you want to ha have him holding it in between his one finger and his thumb, like that. He does also come with a hand for holding the, the cigarette like this, if you want to have him displayed with it. But again, the problem is all of the hands that do stuff are only unfortunately on this side. This hand gets relegated to nothing. And uh, I wish that they had given us some other variations of hands on this side so that I could have had him say displayed with the briefcase and the cigarette on the one side or the briefcase because the briefcase seems to be the ongoing of what I would, would display him with and maybe the pistol in the other hand. And unfortunately you just can't do it with all the hands that he comes included with. As for his alternate outfit, he comes with a UC Santa Cruz banana slugs shirt, as he did in the movie. He also comes with a pair of blue shorts. Now, if you remember, and plugging the original review that I did of Jules Winfield, he also came with the same sort of idea. Not the same t-shirt, granted, and not the same trunks. I think his trunks were red, and his shirt was blue. In fact, I just so happen to have it over here. I can show you the, the, the two different shirts. This was the one that came included with Jules. This is the one that comes included with Vincent. Um, this gives you a variation of how you want to display the figure. I will admit, though, the fact that they are in their, their suits that they wear primarily through most of the movie, at least the parts of the movie that they're in, 
I'd be more inclined to display the figures like that. Display them probably a little bit more creative than I have them currently right now, but I would have the figures nonetheless in suits. Appreciate always when a company gives you above and beyond that and gives you extra things that you can dress them in. I'll show you what it looks like on Vincent, but I'll let you in on a little secret. I'm probably gonna be displaying him with the suit. So the first thing we were gonna wanna do is we wanna take his boots off or his shoes off, I should say. And we need to pop them off. Now, there is a peg and the peg is a little hard to get to because he's also gonna come with sandals, which is something I really should have also mentioned. He does come with a pair of like little flip-flop sandals. But in order for that to happen, and in order for the pants to come off, we're going to have to, of course, get those shoes off first. Then you're going to want to go ahead and undo the belt. You don't have to take it off the loop, so you can keep the belt completely in place. And then the bottom half of the boot, or the bottom half of the pants, I should say, is Velcro. And then you can go ahead and start sliding these off. Just like that. And here's the under body here of Vincent. You'll also see that he's sporting a pair of boxer briefs. Now we can go ahead and do the exact same thing with his jacket. Just take the hands off and slide the jacket off. Then following by the shirt, actually you'll want to take the tie off first and then the shirt after that. I'm certainly dismantling the figure here. I also want to show you that you need to take his head off just because you're going to want to bring the collar up here of the shirt. You'll have a couple little cardboard pieces. I just kept it on there. And be very careful when you take the tie off. It does seem like it's a pretty secure elastic, but being that it's clear and it's plastic, you don't want to very quickly take the tie off just in case this breaks off. And then once that's off, then you can unvelcro the whole shirt, revealing underneath some movie magic. Star Ace has just padded up the uh, torso here of Vincent so it look, makes him look a little fuller which would also explain when we're looking at the two figures side by side Vincent definitely had a much broader torso to him and a lot of that can be chalked up to the fact that they've got this extra padding here in the shoulder area and a little bit in the stomach as well. Once you have Vega dressed up or in this case dressed down this is what he looks like with his shirt, his shorts and now his, his pair of flip-flops on his feet. The feet are pretty well sculpted. I mean, again, this is something you're not gonna spend a lot of time saying, okay, does that look like John Travolta's feet? I think they've done a pretty good job of giving you a bare foot with a, a uh, flip-flop sandal attached to the bottom there. Of course, you've got your blue shorts and you've got yourself the UC Santa Cruz Banana Slugs T-shirt. It's to note as well that I've kept the padding on his torso. I don't suggest taking the padding off I really don't think why you would want to take the padding off because one thing it does aid in, it does keep his torso look relatively fuller as opposed to a really thin frame. For the rest of this review, I'm actually inclined to keep him looking like this because it's a lot easier to convey the articulation points on the figure versus, you know, if they were underneath fabric. Here, I can actually show you. He's got a double hinge on the elbow. Here's one hinge there and there's the secondary hinge right there. So for Vincent Vega's articulation, it is the following. His head rotates all the way around, but then he's got a secondary ball joint right here. This is something now I can show you because he's not wearing his, his shirt, his collared shirt that is. So he's got a ball joint right there, and then he's got a ball joint right up there. Just if you look at only the neck, the head hinges down, it hinges up, and it also rotates back and forth. That's without me moving the head. Then for his head, he's also got the secondary ball joint happening there, which hinges up and down, tilting left and right, and you can rotate it all the way around. Uh, for his shoulders, shoulders hinge outward. You can move him forward, you can move him back. He does also have a shoulder crunch, which is something that you don't see too often with six scale figures. Often at times it's usually just the torso and then the shoulders are attached to that. Here you've actually got a shoulder crunch so it can move forward and back as well. The arms rotate all the way around. He's got that double hinge on the elbow that I was talking about. There's one there, there's one there. There's a, there's a dual hinge happening right there, guys. Right there. 
the hands <laughs> rotate all the way around and you can also hinge them back and forth. Sometimes they are prone to popping off. I find this hand falls off a lot easier than this hand here. But a simple fix, again, you can just pop that back into place. It's on small pegs, but fairly easy to put back into place. He's on an upper torso crunch. And let me also say too, not only is the crunch that way, this way here, but it also has a substantial crunch this way. Now, I really don't know why you would necessarily want to display your figure like this. I guess if you wanted to, you know, if you, if they eventually release, say, the same figure, yeah, maybe you could probably put him in some sort of twist pose. I don't know. But it, I just want to show you that he does have a substantial crunch back and forth. Uh, his waist swivels. His legs split out as well as forward, as well as back. He has an up, upper right at the top here. He's got a swivel cut on his thigh, a double hinge on the knee. You can see it. There's one, there's one, there's two. And he also has a hinge in the foot. The foot rocks one side and back, up and down. And it can be rotated all the way around as well. So, now that I've had a chance to look at Jules Winfield and Vincent Vega from Starius's Pulp Fiction Six Scale Figures, I think my favorite is Vincent Vega. No, no slouch is Jules Winfield, but I think the likeness is a little bit better on Vincent Vega. It looks like John Travolta. But it's one of those cases, certainly, where if you picked up one of these, it's going to feel incomplete. You're going to feel empty inside unless you pick up the second one. I'm glad that they released both of these. I also hope that this isn't the last time that we're going to see Pulp Fiction from Star Ace. There's a lot of other memorable characters from that film. At the very least, let's hope we get ourselves an Uma Thurman. Now, I am wondering what's going on with the back hairpiece. No, and I'm not talking about John Travolta's hairpiece, but I'm talking about the hairpiece that's on Vincent Vega. Is there a reasoning why it looks like it's a separate piece? Is this something that is a precursor maybe to what Star Ace has up their sleeve? Hmm. Speaking of upping or up one's sleeve, one thing that does bother me about Vincent Vega is uh, of all the accessories that he has, why do all of them have to be used by one hand? Uh, he only really has one relaxed palm on the other side of, or the other hand. All the other accessories, the hand holding of the pistol, of course, the briefcase, and the cigar or cigarette, all has to be done with one hand. Why couldn't they have shared a little bit of that and allowed the other hand some other swappable options? So that if I wanted to display Vincent Vega, for example, with the briefcase, and the pistol, I could have done that without having to give up one for the other. That's the only negative I could really make about this figure. Again, it's a good head sculpt. The tailoring on the costume and the outfit that he's wearing has always been good from Star Ace, and Vincent Vega is no exception. Again, I'm really happy that they, they released both figures. If they had released one and then we had to wait a whole year or two years before we got the other one, I would feel empty and cold inside. And luckily, I don't have to feel empty and cold inside. If you don't want to feel empty and cold inside and you want to pick up these for yourself, both Vincent Vega and Jules Winfield are available now if you want to pick them up for yourself. You can find them in other, in various online retail markets. So if you are looking to get these and add them to your collection, hopefully these reviews have helped you a bit. And speaking of these reviews, if you've finished watching Vincent Vega all the way through, thanks for that. Make sure you head back and check out your my review of the Jules Winfield if you haven't already watched it. Certainly stay tuned, guys. More videos will be coming your way. We're going to have a look at some other Star Ace goodies, so FYI. Those will be coming your way as well. Make sure, again, you hit that little subscribe button down below. That will guarantee you that new videos will be coming to your perif, and you'll never miss out, and you'll never be cold inside. Please don't be cold inside. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. Hey, by the way, if you picked up these figures for yourself, let me know down below what you think of them. I always like reading your comments. See you guys next time.